it always feels like it's more and more difficult to choice. That is because the job of leading Taiwan is more and more difficult with all the supply chain disconfiguration. If you look at U.S.-China competition, decoupling, de-risking means Taiwan is at a very difficult position. We have to comply with export control, tariffs, uh, as well as um, a, a long list of restrictions and to help Germany, United States, Japan onshore, at the cost of, is it TSMC shareholders or Taiwanese taxpayers? In short, basically, the new president has to chart a course for Taiwan that would allow us to be economically resilient, at the same time protect the, um, the uh, entire island from any kind of external threat and solve all our domestic problems. So I think uh, for um, for semiconductor companies, this is a very difficult situation. As we built out our expertise and leadership, now we're being squeezed by both China and the U.S. These semiconductor companies uh, churn out 60 percent of the world's chips. Is there a need for Taiwan to be involved in another industry to become more economically diversified? So everybody on the island has been saying um, that we need to diversify for years. Of course, you know, we started the industry uh, uh, in 1987. So it's been decades in the building. What are we doing today that will lead to, in 40 years, a leadership in some other industry, like biotech perhaps, in the wake of the pandemic? So you're right. Economic diversification is the number one issue for the new president, among a list of other competing priorities. So given that this is a strength of Taiwan, is it also a weakness? It's Achilles' heel. Absolutely, Emily. It's a double-edged sword. The fact that 92 percent of the advanced troops are made here means the United States, to start, says we need to first onshore uh, on Arizona soil. And on top of it, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket because what if China attacks? And I think, of course, what is our strength is now suddenly our weakness.